I'm going to be doing a haul from Japan as well as highlight a couple of things that were super useful on our recent trip. I know this content has kind of been stretched out because there were so many vlogs for the trip and I feel like a lot of people are going to Japan this year. I thought this would be helpful in terms of including what was really helpful for us to have on our trip. We're gonna get started, but if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Lenore and any of these kinds of luxury fashion related videos as well as vlogs. So if you like the vibe here, please hit that subscribe button as well as notifications bell so that you and I post new videos and let's get to the video. So before we get started on the things in Japan that were super useful and my little haul. I wanted to do a quick little unboxing with Caseify, who you guys know I've worked with many times and also almost always I have a Caseify case on my phone. This is the Japan Snacks one that I bought when Mark and I first booked our trip last year. Got so many compliments on this on the trip because everyone was pointing out like all of the different snacks and pretty much tried all of these on the trip. Love this case so much. Thank you so much to Caseify for sponsoring a portion of this video. If anyone is interested in shopping Caseify as well as any of the items that I am sharing in this video, I will have a link down below so you can shop. It's messy because I have already opened this. You guys know how much I love my Caseify cases. This one is a 14 Pro case with MagSafe. Then this one is just one of their plain cases. The phone cases are also made from recycled material. When we were in Japan, we actually stopped by a Caseify like pop-up or kiosk. They had a setup in Osaka. It's like literally a drop-off bin where you can bring your old cases as you shop for a new one. Kind of matches my matcha. On the side of this, it says this phone is made from recycled phone cases as my middle name on the bottom. Inside, I also have a strap card. So this one I have shown you guys before in a previous video, and this is one of the things that I loved having in Japan. The strap card just looks like this, and this attaches onto your phone through the case. Through this, you can use several different straps so that you can literally just have your phone case hanging off of your body. Removing my case, which also has MagSafe, and then we're just going to put this one in here, or like any phone case, just goes right through the bottom part where your phone charges. You're going to slide in your phone, and then, I have several straps I wanted to share with you all. Here we have a leather phone strap. There is also an additional little loop in case I wanted to like attach an AirPods case or something. So this is the first strap. Also have a sling in beige. This last one is probably my favorite because it makes the phone look so you know, just a little dressier, and it is the gold chain. So the thing about the gold chain is that it is not adjustable, but my other ones are. But I just love the way that this looks, and I like how light this is. This is what the phone chain looks like, obviously, like, if I'm holding my phone, especially, like, when we got to Disney, like, I just always knew where my phone was, and so I really love being able to like quickly take a photo and then just drop my phone. Like even though I want to measure if a bag can fit my phone or not, most of the time the phone is in my hand and in this case now it can be on my strap. These devices tons of designs in terms of their phone cases, laptop cases, iPad cases, phone straps, and other accessories on their website. So in case anyone is interested in shopping Caseify, please use my link down below. And once again, thank you so much to Caseify for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now let's get on to the rest of my Japan essentials. First up, a coin pouch. This isn't really a coin pouch. I mean, I think it's a coin pouch. I won this at one of the gotcha stations 
at Nara Park. I literally saw it right before we were about to hop on the train. I didn't think to bring a coin pouch with me. Thank God I found this one because on that trip, I was stuffing so many coins into my wallet. A lot of places do take card now and tap. So you don't have to carry cash around as much as you may have had to in the past. But Marco and I still carried a lot of cash with us and a lot of that cash eventually turned into coins. So I highly recommend bringing a coin pouch with you to Japan. I also saw someone when we're in Japan bring a pill organizer instead because then she organized her coins into each individual thing and I thought it was like the smartest thing ever. And I should have done that because there would be times where I would have to pay for the street food and I'm like rummaging through my coin pouch and looking at each coin to see what it is. And it is the most touristy thing ever. Granted, they are so patient, but they are super efficient there. The more prepared you are, the better. Another thing that was really good for us to have is our JR Pass. So Marco reserved this before our trip and then we redeemed it at the airport. This rail pass allowed us to go from Tokyo to Osaka, Osaka to Kyoto, Kyoto back to Tokyo within a week for less than what it would have been to buy those tickets individually. This all depends on your travel time and where you plan on going. So I highly recommend checking out what your itinerary is, whether or not a Japan rail pass is better for you, I've heard of people saying that they were better off just buying individual tickets. Other people saying that buying a JR Pass helped them save lots of money. So again, totally up to you and your schedule. Our first train was our first day of the pass. We got a seven day ticket, either the third or the fourth day to Kyoto. And then our very last train, Kyoto to Tokyo, was on that seventh day. A lot of people also said that you need to buy your JR Pass before you travel. Then other people were saying that they just bought it there and it was fine, so that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I have in here is my Suica card. I got this at the airport and then after getting the physical card, I was able to actually add it onto my phone. And this was super convenient because when we were in Japan, all I had to do was tap my phone and that's how we were taking the trains within each city. So the Suica card is also really great because you can use it at 7-Eleven, a lot of Little shops and souvenir places also take Suica, so it was a super convenient way to kind of budget little things on our trip. I was able to easily reload it with my cards on my phone, and that way I didn't have to see a ton of little transactions on my cards. I just saw larger transactions for refilling my Suica, and this was a super convenient way for us to get little things throughout the trip. Marco and I have T-Mobile, so that means whenever we travel internationally, we also have a plan where we are able to use data while we were outside of the United States. It was just at the tail end of that trip that we kind of ran out of data. I think mine actually ran out at the airport. We didn't need the pocket Wi-Fi. However, I have heard that getting a SIM is much better and faster rather than getting the Wi-Fi. So that's just another thing to keep in mind for your trip, depending how long you are traveling. The weather in Japan can get pretty unpredictable. There were a couple of days where it said that there was gonna be no rain and then it did end up raining. So I highly recommend bringing a small portable umbrella with you if you can. There were times where we got caught without an umbrella. So that is just something to keep in mind. This goes for any country that Mark and I go to. We try and learn basic phrases to just even say hello, thank you, please. I think it's just really important to kind of show that respect when you are traveling to someone else's country. We don't expect other people to just have to know English, of course, but Google Translate was also very helpful in us trying to get past that language barrier. If you are doing some shopping and grocery runs, this little bag came in so handy. So this is just from Dagny Dover and it's literally a grocery bag. I loved how compact it is. It didn't take up that much room in my bag at all. And so it was really easy for me to just pack this and then whip it out when we needed to put our purchases in a separate bag. Last but not least, comfy sneakers. So I traveled with only sneakers on this trip and then a pair of sandals because I knew that we were going to be doing tons of walking on this trip. We were averaging at about 15,000 steps per day. And although I had allotted time in our itinerary to take hotel breaks, sometimes it just wasn't in our schedule or it didn't make sense for us to go back to our hotel and then back out again. And so some days we really were just out since like eight or 9 a.m. and then back in our hotel room at 8 or 9 p.m. So highly recommend getting comfortable sneakers. And this is a great time to segue into the haul because I had purchased 
two additional sneakers on the trip. In Osaka, Marco and I both got sneakers from Nike. I got these sneakers called the Air Max Bliss and they are so comfortable. I really felt like I was stepping into a pillow when I first put them on. And so for the remainder of the trip, I was in these shoes and they were so comfortable. I loved wearing them. I also loved the look of them. It's also a style that I didn't really see before. And then for the last leg of our trip in Japan, I found these New Balances that I really loved. I think we were in the Harajuku area. These sneakers are so light and so comfortable and I didn't wear them on the trip. I kept them pristine and brand new, but I did start wearing them once we got back home and they are so comfortable and so light and I really, really love these. Next up, you may have already seen on my Instagram, it is a bag and this is my very first Mimi bag. I got the pocket bag that you may have seen all over social media. I particularly just knew I had to have this colorway because it is not as common, but I just really love this kind of grungy, distressed style of it, and I felt like it was very cute for Japan and to know that this is a bag that I got in Japan. It was also the last one and I also really loved the cargo kind of style of it. I loved all of the different pockets and so when we were on the trip I had like my sunglasses in here, I had my AirPods in this back one, I had coins in another one and it was just kind of a great way to segregate everything that I needed on the trip. Price wise this is much less. I can't find the US pricing of this model but my total for Japan was I believe just under 2800 for this and the other thing that I got from Yumu which is this cap. So this is just like a dark denim on denim. Mimu isn't as obvious. And I got the nylon Prada jacket. I was like, you know what? The weather is so unpredictable. What if I get caught in the rain? That was why I bought this. But this has also been on my wish list for quite some time. Just something kind of sporty and cute. Prada is right across from Yumu. And also where I was shopping, what everyone was so friendly and so nice. And I had a really lovely experience. When you are also shopping luxury in Japan, you only need to be bringing your passport in order to get that VAT refund price. So it's not like Europe where you get charged the full amount and then you have to declare your items at the airport and then you have to wait for that refund. You basically get a discounted price right at checkout so you don't have to worry about waiting for that money to come back into your account. You show your passport and they basically give you a percentage off of your items. Next up, this may be repetitive if you've been watching the vlogs, but this is one that I got in Kyoto. Actually, this one is from Nara. And I just fell in love with the beautiful pattern of it. And then this is from a shop that I went to. I think this was in Kyoto. This is 100% silk. Thing is like attached to it still. But I got one for me and then one for my mom that is a bit shorter. And I love this little light color. And then it just like has these pops of blue. At the airport, Marco and I got tons of snacks. I believe I did like a snack haul in another video. I will try and link it down below if it's already gone live. But I got a sake set. I knew that I wanted to get this for the house to put up in our kitchen. And obviously we bought sake. So this is just a very pretty set for two. What I wish I did get in Japan are more of like the bowls and stuff, but because we weren't sure about how much space we had and I didn't want it breaking, I wasn't fully prepared to bring it all back. This was all packaged in a box, so I know that we're going to be going back to Japan with friends and stuff. When exactly, I don't know. We were kind of talking about it last night. Definitely want to get like some cute bowls and sauce bowls the next time we go. I put a lot of souvenirs in this bag. Got a lot of souvenirs for friends. I've already also started distributing them, so this has kind of been slightly emptied out. One thing that I got for Marco and I and some of our closest friends are chopsticks with our names on them. So let me just fix this because this is not matching. This is a shop that we saw in Ginza. I got our names on these chopsticks in English and Japanese as well. So this one is mine. And then this one is Marco's. I got tons of cute little kawaii things. And this is one of the things that I won from the gachas. I also made these little snack kits, but I think I might've shown this to you in another video already, but tons of different Kit Kats. I have the stuff set aside for my little giveaway box. I don't want to show you guys what's in there. Maybe I'll show it in another video, 
but I have still yet to pick winners as of right now. These little baggies I just got from Amazon to put things in, but everyone gets like a cute little charm and then some snacks. People got stickers. For Marco's nieces and nephew, we got them personalized chopsticks that are like kitty sized and these are Miffy. So this is one that we got them in Arashiyama cute little coin pouches that are made from kimonos. You will see a lot of stuff at the airport as well. So in case anyone feels like they forgot to get someone something, the airport has tons of stuff. This one is a package that I put together for my manager. She also got like stickers. I'm showing this because hopefully she gets this box by the time you're watching this. Little Hello Kitty, obviously. And then one of the places that Marco and I loved so much was an udon shop and so I bought a box of their udon kit and I got some of this into my manager's gift. Pasta Lubong box. Everyone, I want everyone to know what Pasta Lubong is from here on out because I'm going to be doing this for all of our travels. And then I got a little tabby socks that has like a little big toe separation. I love all of these souvenirs because they're just like obviously very Japan specific things. Even for my giveaway I tried to grab something from each place that we went to and so I think even though this may not be like a designer wallet or a super luxury item giveaway, I feel like this is the most love and thought that I've put into a gift because this trip really was so special, one of my favorites by far. I think that may be it. Granted, a lot of stuff has already been given away. Also, my room's a mess. <laughs> and I was waiting to film this video before I could fully clean because I knew that if I cleaned prior to filming this, everything would just be all over the place again. All right, so now that we are done with the haul and sharing with you guys what we loved bringing with us to Japan, what we loved having in Japan. My itinerary for the trip is also linked down below that also has reference points to anything that we planned or booked on the trip. Just wanted to say thank you all so much for following along, for all of your love and support as always. Hopefully you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!